See, the thing about perfectionism is that it's not ultimately about doing it well. It's really about never doing it well enough. Like, no matter how much you plan, no matter how hard you do it, your inner critic is going to sabotage you or is going to tell you that it's not good enough or is going to tell you that, yeah, that was pretty good, but can you do it again? And that cycle of thinking that we get into ultimately is one of the things we must overcome. Because being a perfectionist isn't an admirable trait. We may say it to ourselves, well, you know, I have higher standards and that's why I can't really get stuff done. But to be honest with you, that's bullshit. Um, the fact is you're afraid. You're afraid of being judged by yourself or by others. And it's better to stay in the starting blocks than it is to come in second or third or fourth or fifth place. It's better to not move at all than to risk falling on your face. So when I see people kind of, kind of, not kind of boasting, sort of, not really, but boasting about their perfectionism, I'm not impressed. I don't think it's cool or great or you're super foxy because, you know, you, you, know, you really need to do it well or else you're not going to bother. I think it's a lame excuse for not just jumping in and trying it. Because the fact is that you will only get better. You will only approach this perfection that you so desperately need by doing something and by doing it again and again and again. And I say all this not to insult you or hurt your feelings, but because I am one too. I am there. I am a fellow sufferer. And I know that this impulse has done nothing to advance the quality of what I do. It's just held me back. Because the only way to get better is to keep going and to keep doing stuff. And the perfectionism just gets in that way. And I think there are certain tools, like for instance the computer, that um, make it worse. Because you can always command Z. You can always nudge it a pixel to the left, a pixel to the right. You can always change the color of this one that way. And I think you're just delaying judgment when you do that. There's a tremendous arrogance built into perfectionism. This assumption that you have these higher standards that you understand and you know how to achieve that perfection, but Others may not see it, but you know, you do, and uh, you know, you're working towards it, and you're going to get there, maybe. But I think that's hubris, you know, because I don't know that your standards are any better than anybody else's. I think that you may be noticing certain details and thinking that they need to be improved, but you may be missing the forest for the trees. You may put it in the hands of somebody else who suddenly notices that actually there's something bad or good that you hadn't even noticed or counted on. But by putting it out there, by releasing it, by not clutching it to your breast, but saying, have it, world, let's see what happens. You're, fear, you're fearful and you're avoiding the risk. So, think about this. This is the time to seize this problem by the throat and choke it out of your life because nobody is paying attention right now. We need solutions to so many things right now and we don't need perfect ones. If we waited for the perfect cure, how many people would die in the meantime? If we waited for the perfect loaf of bread, how many people would starve? This is no time for perfection. This is the time for action. In all manner of things, including in your 
life and my life in every corner of the planet, there's an opportunity to move things ahead, but not if we insist that it has to be perfect before we can share it, before we can put it out there, before we can test it, or perhaps before we can even begin it. And uh, you're hurting no one but yourself. I'm hurting no one but me by this incessant need to get it right before I'll put myself out there. You know, I mean, I... I I embrace my failings, my wonkiness, not necessarily because I think it's the best style or approach, but honestly, a lot of times, because I kind of don't know how to do it any better, and if I wait to figure it out, I won't actually get anything done. So I'm a pretty productive person, but that's basically because I, I kind of know myself well enough to know that I probably can't do it that well. Anything, um, whether it's writing or drawing or streaming on YouTube or giving the advice or anything, um, I can think of a lot of reasons why I shouldn't be doing anything that I do. But I decided that that's not what I want to do. I don't want to sit around thinking of those reasons. I'd rather plunge in. So, take this as a hall pass, this time we're in. Say to your inner critic, that monkey in your head, we'll be perfect when the world is perfect. But right now the world is messed up. And that's permission. That's permission to just do what you do. Be you cracks and flaws. It's okay. Surviving is the bare minimum of what we should be doing right now. I, think, I don't think we should just be surviving. I think we should be looking for ways to make things better, but not perfect. Because anybody who had plans about perfection when all of this happened, believe me, they were the ones who suffered the most. Because perfection is all about a need for control. To control everything, to control the outcome, to control the results, to control the response. You don't have that control, my friend. Whatever's happened has happened. It's out of your control. Live with it. Embrace it. See it as an aesthetic. As an approach to life. An approach that says... I'm going to make it wonky. I'm going to splatter some ink on it. I'm going to have thumbprints on it. I'm going to misspell a word. Don't begrudge the world your creativity because you're afraid of making a mess. You know, the Japanese call appreciation of messiness or imperfection wabi-sabi, right? The cracks and chips and wrinkles that happen in things that are weathered and aged. And we're all getting weathered and aged every day. You know, we're getting wrinkled, we're getting scarred, we need haircuts, we're putting on weight, we're not getting enough cardio. That's the way it is right now. It's okay. You know, you can't let that hold you back. Because the thing is, if you allow yourself to go forward despite your perfectionism, you may stumble upon things that are magical and amazing. Your perfectionism could be holding you back from massive discoveries, from beautiful experiences. Embrace your imperfection, embrace your amateurism, embrace your how far you still have to go, and Get on with it. Make some stuff.